All right, Briar's on her way out, but Viscera is here to stay. Can he get the bump? Does he get the cards from Dynasty? Let's find out. Let's get into it. All right, first one we'll talk about is the Amethyst Tiara. Um, kind of a weird uh, marble equipment here. It's a, it's a sideboard. I don't even know. Is it really? Do you really bring this in? Anyways, uh, destroy the Tiara. Rear chance you control has Spell Void this turn. Um, it could be good. It can just shut down like Kano from winning. Or even Icelander's big turn. Um, you know, it's. I think it's. It could see play for sure, especially if those two heroes dominate the meta. Annals of Sutcliffe. We've been testing this card to see if it's worked. Um, it's no Rosetta Dorn. I'm gonna say that it's really cool that um, a book is a weapon. I thought that would sooner be with wizards, but I do like that it's with rune plates. Draw a card, if it's attack action and non-attack action, card with pitch, you create a rune chant. I mean, that's kind of cool, but... I mean, it's, it's just it's just not there, honestly. Um, not yet, at least. Cool concept, though. All right, let's get into the Majestic. So we got Cryptic Crossing. This is a three cost six attack um, that if attack action and non-attack action were pitched to play it, the first time it deals damage to the defending hero, they discard a card and you draw a card. This is obviously a great pummel target. And I could see a tall viscerai using this for sure. I think this is uh, like the new, the beginning of a new way to play viscerai with the non-attack and attack actions being pitched for bigger cards and just having a go tall version instead of the go wide that we traditionally put rude blades with. So I like the concept of Cryptic Crossing. I think there might be a deck out there for it, for sure. Uh, but I have not seen it yet. I do plan on playing with it. I have not got a ton of Viscerai reps in yet, um, just because uh, I'm not very much of a Viscerai player, but I would love to play a Tall Viscerai, something like that. Anyhow, let's move on. Diabolic Ultimatum. I like this card. It is definitely a sideboard card. It's kind of cool how Rune Blade seem to have the most sideboard cards. Um, if an attack action card was pitched to play Diabolic Ultimatum, each hero chooses and destroy an ally they control. If a non-attack was used or was pitched to play it, each hero chooses and destroy an aura they control. Um, so a very good card to play against, obviously, Dromai, especially if you can get both of those off and they haven't burned them all and some dragon out that you can kill two things by playing this one card, which is really good. Uh, but this also gets rid of channel not heroic, channel like frigid, it's, it's chill, um, and any other aura out there. Uh, and I think that's really cool. I like that, I like that a lot. So Diabolic Ultimatum, good sideboard card. Looming Doom is a very interesting card. Uh, enters the battlefield, destroy all of your enchants you control, and then you put that many doom counters on there, and then each turn, you take a doom counter off and deal two damage um, at the end of the turn. I, I do like that it's at the end of the turn, not the start of the turn, so I, I, I think they did that right. Um, it's very interesting. There is a ruling with Looming Doom that you can respond to rune chants being popped, and if you play at instant speed, you can have those root chants before they get popped go into the Looming Doom, so you get that many Doom counters. But, the trigger for the root chants being popped will still go off and the damage will still be dealt. So you, you kind of get like the best of both worlds in this scenario. Uh, it's a little hard to pull off because basically you have to attack with a, an attack action card. So, and then make a ton of rune chance from that and then come in with another attack or what have you and then play the looming doom at instant speed because with spell out creepers you have to come in with an attack first and so it, it's it's still kind of hard to really like get the full value of each rune chance that's going to be put into looming doom but it's kind of cool that that option is out there this seems like a the type of build that it's like you know you make a ton of rune chance and then just kind of win the game in that way i think that build might be a little too slow for the format right now 
but if we see Phi kind of simmer out, then, you know, maybe a rune chant heavy this right deck is, and in which case, like, will be like a part of the meta, in which case, Looming Doom will certainly be a part of that, I would imagine. Um, so, out of these Majestics here, I honestly really like the Cryptic Crossing for its own value, but if that deck just isn't good, then Cryptic Crossing is a bad card. Diabolic Ultimate is a great sideboard card, and Looming Doom just gives it an option how to play. Alright, definitely Duet. I'm not big into this card because it's a two pitch, or I mean a two cost um, attack that when it, if you pitch an action card, it gets plus two. Not attack card, you create two for rune chance. So it's either a two for four plus two rune chance or a two for six. I suppose that those are good numbers. Um, there's no way you, there's, okay, there's technically is a way that you can get both effects, but then you're pitching two reds for it. That kind of sucks. So definitely do it. I think it's okay. I think here it costing two kind of goes again with the tall rune champ build. Um, so that's something to look at. Blessing of the cold. I think this is another blessing that will be used. I think this is a blessing that is used in the like rune champ, you know, builder type fist run where you're just building up a ton of rune champ. I can see the red blessing of cold being used for that. Aether Slash, I don't think is a very good card. The red one's a 1 for 4, that if you pitch a non-attack card, it does 1 arcane damage, so a uh, 1 for 4 and 1. Uh, but you have to pitch a non-attack card. Um, it doesn't have to go again, and it's kind of, that's just kind of mediocre. 1 for 4 is kind of under curve, really. Um, Runic Reaping, it's a 1 cost, so... You and it's a, it's it's an action, so it's not attack action. It's a kind of like a Mavrin Sky, except it doesn't give your attack go again, which is pretty big. If you like, uh, if you attack with if the, an attack action card was pitched to play this card, it gets your next attack gets like a buff of plus one, which is like a very small amount, and it costs one. Like, had it cost zero, obviously you wouldn't be able to get that buff, but like, did you need the buff? I don't know. It's, to me, this card is not that good. I'm gonna be honest. Skyfire Lanterns, same deal, you know? It's, you know, if you reveal red, you get a rune chant. Reveal yellow, reveal blue. Yeah, these, these last, like, nine cards, I think, are just, like, complete draft chat. I mean, it's not even draft, because you can't draft the set, but it's just, it's just not good. Um... I don't think Viscerai gets a huge bump here. I think there might be some more like Viscerai decks getting brewed, and Viscerai might get a little weird. Um, might even get to a point where it's like Dash, where you're not sure what type of Viscerai you're facing. But overall, I don't think any of these decks are enough to impact the meta. So, uh, unfortunate for for Viscerai players, but Viscerai is already okay. I think. You know, you just kind of get a little bonus um, sideboard card, maybe if you want it. You might not even have room for it. So I think I think Viscerai is fine.